Hi, everyone. Um, so at this point, we will jump into a system demonstration where we will walk through the reconciliation process that Renee and Winnie just reviewed in the slides. So on my screen here, this is the main screen that you'll see when you log into the account reconciliation tool. On the left-hand side, you'll see a compliance overview, which includes any announcements from the administrator, number of reconciliations which are late, which are due today, due within the next seven days, or just have a general status of open. Each item in the toolbar can be clicked and will navigate users to their specific work lists. But from the home screen, users can click on the reconciliation tile to see all reconciliations assigned to them. So one important field to call out is the account ID here. Um, so as discussed in the slides, ARCs will reconcile at the entity account level, or in some cases, entity fund account level, um, which is depicted here in the account ID. So you'll notice that fund and fin unit placeholders within the account ID, and these have been configured in case reconciliation need to be performed at the fin unit or fund level in the future. Um, so for example, a couple of the reconciliations are performed at the fund level. So it's important we have those two segments configured just in case you do need to break out reconciliations into more detail at any point in time. So along with the account ID, the reconciliation screen will show general columns which are helpful when preparing reconciliations. And as a preparer, I do have the option to customize the screen to align with my needs. So to do so, I can come into actions here and I can click select columns. So maybe as a preparer, I want to monitor how many days overdue each reconciliation is. So I can scroll down and check my days overdue column. And I can use my blue arrow to move it over to the selected. I can then reorder the columns if I wanted to move days overdue closer to the top. Um, I can do so and click OK. And now I'll see how many days overdue each of my reconciliations are. I can also add filters to narrow down my results. So here I can come in and click add a filter. Maybe I want to look at status. So here you'll notice a status column where I can see open with prepare. Maybe that's all I want to look at. So I can even fill, uh, search on the specific filters. I can click status. And I can filter out open or closed. So I'll just go ahead and filter open so I can only see the reconciliations that are open with me. And if this list view is helpful for me going forward with my added columns, my added filters, I can save it as a personal view, which is selectable from the view dropdown up here. So to do so, I can select actions, select save view. And I'll give it the name Megan's List and go ahead and click OK. And now this list will be selectable for me from the drop down. Saved lists are only visible to the user who created it unless it's published by an administrator for all users to see. A few other items I just want to point out about the reconciliation screen before jumping into the reconciliation preparation. As you can see here, each reconciliation is assigned a preparer and a reviewer. And as mentioned in the slides, preparers can either be an individual person or a team in case collaboration is required during the preparation. Um, we can also set auto reconciliation rules based on certain criteria. So for example, if I do come in and select closed reconciliations, right, so, um, here you'll see a list of reconciliations which have automatically been marked as closed. Um, so based on the defined rules, this reconciliation will auto submit and approve if the source system is zero for this month and zero for last month. So the preparer or reviewer will not need to take any action on these. Um, and we do have various auto certification rules set up in system in the system based on the various use cases. Um, for example, if a source system equals a subsystem, it'll automatically submit and approve. Um, this is just one use case here. So I am going to come up here and clear my filter at this point. Um, and I will begin start or begin preparing a uh, balance comparison reconciliation. 
So the search functionality in the system is, is pretty good here. So I'll go ahead and type in the account that I want to prepare. Right. And I'll go ahead and open it by clicking on the account name. All right, so this reconciliation is reconciliation compliance. So we are comparing balances between the general ledger and a sub ledger. So in this case, we are comparing AR. Um, the first screen to show is a balance summary screen, which shows the integrated ending balances from the source system and the subsystem. So my job as a preparer is to explain why there is a $2 million difference between the two. And I'll just note real quick, this is test data. Um, so don't be alarmed to see a $2 million difference between um, your general ledger and subsystem in this account. Okay, so to view more detail about what makes up the GL balance, I can click on the ending balance to view the line items that were automatically brought in from ERP. So a second window will pop up here. And in this case, it's just one line item, but if there are multiple line items here, you'd be able to see all the line items that make up your balance. And then similarly, I can also click into my subsystem balance to see all of the details coming over from the accounts receivable subledger. So here I have 116 items that make up my $20 million balance. And if I scroll to the right from AR, I'm able to see a little bit more detail, um, including the invoice date, how many days past due, the customer name, description, and so on. Okay, so to explain that difference, that $2 million difference, I will go ahead and add a source system adjustment or an explanation. So I'll come in and click into my source system explanations tab. And to begin explaining that difference, I'll go ahead and click on the plus button here. And I'll start by adding my mandatory short description. Just call it explanation one for demo purposes, but you can get pretty descriptive here. Um, my transaction date is just my date that the explanation was created. Optionally, I can add a long description and select whether or not I want the explanation to carry forward. So if this will be a recurring explanation for the foreseeable future, I can click yes, and it'll appear on my reconciliations um, for months forward until it's removed. Right, and then on the right-hand side, I can go ahead and add the amount of my explanation. So to start, I'm just gonna add $2 million to show you what happens when I don't explain the um, difference in full. So I'll add $2 million and I'll click save. And you'll notice that I still have a $397,000 difference. And you can see that on the summary screen here too. Now, if I try and go and submit my reconciliation, I'll see an error that says I need to explain the reconciliation until the unexplained difference is $0. So the record, it will prevent me from submitting if I haven't explained the reconciliation in full. So to do so, I will come back into my explanations tab and I'll just add another one for the remaining amount. Um, so 396, 975. Again, eight cents here. Um, I'll go ahead and add my explanation too and click save here. And now you'll see a green bar indicating that I no longer have any unexplained differences. And at this time, I can go ahead and submit the reconciliation. And, um, a couple more things I'd like to point out before I move on to the next use case and submit this reconciliation. Um, on the right-hand side of the screen, you will see what we call drawers in the system. So if you click any one of them, the drawer will open. Um, so for example, the first tab shows just additional properties of the reconciliation. Um, you can also see the whole reconciliation workflow so I can see who the preparer and who the reviewer is. Um, my, my red dates indicating that this reconciliation is very late at this point. Um, you can add supporting detail. If I needed to attach additional documentation to support my reconciliation, I can either add an attachment or a link to maybe a shared location. Um, I can add any comments to the reviewer, so you'll notice I can do it directly from the summary screen, or I can do it within the comments drawer. Um, again, if the comment is something that will continue to show for months 
um, months after this, I can click carry forward and it will continue to carry forward my comment until it's deleted. Um, the next tab will show prior reconciliations for up to 12 months. So at any point in time, if you wanted to look back into a previous reconciliation for this account, account for any additional investigation, you can do so by clicking on the specific period. And then lastly, you have an audit history of the reconciliation. So you can see any changes that were made by either the preparer or the administrator, for example, an auto reconciliation rule ran. Um, and automatically mark the reconciliation as closed, you'd be able to see that in the audit history. All right, so at this point, since I have no unexplained differences, I will go ahead and submit my reconciliation, verify that it's complete, and click yes. You'll now see that the status has changed to open with Anshman, who is reviewer. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and um, we've looked at a balanced comparison reconciliation. So at this point, I'll show what an account analysis reconciliation looked like. So in the slides, we went over the two different reconciliation compliance methods. Um, so just wanna make sure we hit on both of those in today's demonstration. So just as I went ahead and searched for my balanced comparison account, I will search for my account analysis account. And I'll go ahead and open up my reconciliation. One thing that I didn't note on the balance comparison was um, the additional rows that you see here on the summary screen. So balance, uh, beginning balance is nothing more than the ending balance from your previous period. Net activity is just your beginning balance from, or sorry, ending balance from the prior period minus your ending balance from the current period. Um, any balance explanations that you create on the additional tabs will show here. Um, and then your unexplained difference is just, in this case, your um, ending balance minus any explanations that you add. So the goal here is to get the unexplained difference to zero. Um, so here you'll notice that unlike my balance comparison reconciliation, I don't, I don't have a subledger column. Um, I only have a general ledger column where it's my job as the preparer to explain what makes up this ending balance. So just as I did um, in my balance, com uh, balance comparison reconciliation, I'll come ahead and navigate into my balance explanations tab, click on the plus button, and here I can start adding um, explanations. So overall, the process is, is the same, um, just the look and feel of the screen and the overall process of the reconciliation is a little bit different. So I'll add my explanation. And for my amount, again, I'll just start by adding 13,000 um, to show you what happens when I have um, a $214 variance still. So again, if I come in and submit, I'll get an error. Won't let me submit until my unexplained difference is zero. So at this point, I will come back in and add my second explanation to explain what makes up the remaining balance. Um, I showed you the reconciliation drawers on the main screen. If I wanted to attach either a comment or a supporting document just to this explanation, I can do that as well. Um, so if I wanted to link something specifically here, I could. So I'll go ahead and click save. At this point, I have no unexplained differences, so I can come in and submit my reconciliation, verify that it's complete, and my reconciliation will be open with Anshman as the reviewer. All right, so to close my reconciliation, I will just click the X button in the top right corner. Um, again, from my reconciliation screen, you'll notice that the, the status changed as well. Um, so the reconciliation list screen is a great place to add different columns that are helpful to you for even reporting um, so that you can kind of review an audit history of each reconciliation. And at any point in time, you can export the reconciliation list screen to Excel as just an additional offline report. Okay, um, so at this point, we've gone through the preparer process. Now I'm just going to pivot into the reviewer role to show you what what those screens look like. So I'll open up another browser here um, where I'm logged in as Anshman, who was the reviewer of both of those reconciliations. 
Um, so from the reconciliation list screen, you'll see that overall it looks, it feels the same as what I saw as a preparer. Um, if I come in and set my status to with reviewer, you'll now notice my two reconciliations that I had just submit for review. So my first one was my account analysis reconciliation, which I can open up here as a reviewer. I can look at any of the comments, um, the unexplained difference, I could, or validate that the unexplained difference is zero. I can navigate into the explanations to review both of the explanations that were added by the preparer. Um, if there were any attachments, I can come in, download the attachments, review any supporting detail. Um, and then you'll notice in the top right, instead of the submit button, as a reviewer, I have the ability to either approve the reconciliation or reject the reconciliation. So you'll notice if I come in and click reject, I'll get an error that says I need to add a rejection reason so that the preparers know what the required next steps are for them to be able to accurately complete the reconciliation. So that rejection reason field, um, if I open up this, this attribute drawer here, this is where the rejection reason sits. Um, so I can say, please add support in detail. That, they, that way the reviewers know, or sorry, the preparers know that they need to add an attachment. And at this point I can come in and reject the reconciliation. So you'll see the re reconciliation has been rejected. And if I come into the summary screen, it's back open with myself as the preparer. Now, um, navigating into the second reconciliation that I had submit, which was the balance comparison reconciliation. Again, reviewing works the exact same way, whether it's balance comparison or account analysis. Um, I can make sure that my unexplained difference is zero, can navigate into the explanations to review those. Um, again, I can approve or reject the reconciliation. Um, so since I rejected the last one, I'll go ahead and just approve this one. You'll notice that the reconciliation has been approved and my status is set to close. Okay, so from a process perspective, um, we've walked through in the system um, the process that we outlined in the slides. So prepares, preparing reconciliation, compliance reconciliations, as well as approvers reviewing the reconciliations and either approving them or rejecting reconciliations.